Hello and welcome to the Green Dragon Channel. Today, I'm going to tell you a story. But first, of course, tea needs to happen. This is Earl Grey, which I just spilled on myself because I am the most graceful person on the planet. And this is the girliest teapot I could find. Ow, there's more. Look, it's got a bow on it. I'm very, very pleased about that. Now, we shall begin. This is one of my favorite books. Cinderella is not necessarily my favorite fairy tale, uh, but this is definitely one of my favorite editions. Um, the illustrator is Kanuka Wycraft, who is my favorite illustrator of all time. Her art is incredible and well detailed, and it's just wonderful. Cinderella. For all dreamers. There was once an honest gentleman who took for his second wife the proudest lady in the land. She had two equally haughty daughters, while he himself had a most kind and beautiful young girl. Sadly, the man became ill and died not long after the wedding. Wasting no time, his wicked wife, it's making a lot of assumptions right off the bat, assigned his good daughter all the chores of the house. While her girls rested in lavish chambers hung with mirrors, her stepdaughter was sent to sleep on an old straw mattress in a dirty attic. I take it back. And when the girl's daily work was done, she would collapse, exhausted, in the chimney corner among the cinders. Cinderella, her wicked stepsisters named her, but she paid no heed to their scorn. Gorgeous picture of the young lass. Kanuko is the girl. <clears throat> One day, Cinderella headed through the, a nearby wood, whistling on her way home from the town market when her sweet melody was interrupted by the mournful chirping of a bird. Before her, she saw an injured bluebird on the ground, and she knelt down, carefully examining its lame wing. A robin once smacked face first into my front window and died soon after, I can relate. <clears throat> but in the next instant, Cinderella was startled by a man's voice calling out. Raising her head, she gasped, for heading towards her was the king's son, seated on a gallant horse. She could not imagine what a noble would ask of a girl such as her. Nevertheless, she spoke up bravely. Have you lost your way, good sir? I'm speaking as British as I can because it's Clausia. The handsome gentleman smiled at her. Perhaps, for I have wandered away from my horseman while distracted by the sight of a fair creature. Smooth. As was I, Cinderella replied, stroking the small animal in her hand, <whistles> never imagining that he may have been speaking of her. But the poor thing is hurt. I feared that you were ill when I saw your huddled figure in the distance, the prince continued, but you are well. Suddenly ashamed of her humble appearance, Cinderella thanked the prince for his concern and hastily gathered her bags. I must be home now for the bird needs immediate attention, she explained, quickly disappearing into the woods. Walk away. That's always the best play. Walk away. He's got a pretty sweet perm going on here. Kind of reminds me of my dad from the 80s. That actually looks exactly like my dad from the 80s. It happened that soon the king's son hosted a series of balls, and Cinderella's two stepsisters were invited to attend. They were very proud and happy, but forever fussed about what they should wear to the gala. Is it a ball or a gala? Whatever. Cinderella gave them the best advice she could and offered to dress them and arrange their hair herself. While she was combing out the elder's hair, the ill-natured girl said, Cinderella, do you not wish you were going to the ball? Madame, she began, for they always made her address them in this way. It's polite. You know that it is not my fortune to have any such pleasure. Yes, people would laugh to see a filthy little cinder girl at a royal ball. The sister replied. 
And despite those heartless words, Cinderella continued to brush her stepsister's hair until it was perfectly even and smooth. But after a coach had whisked the sisters away to the regal affair, where's the stepmother? I guess I assume that she's there. She sat down by the kitchen fire and cried. Tonight it would be her sisters who would see the prince, not Cinderella. She had not said a word about meeting the prince in the wood, but often thought of it. In her dreams, she did not rush off ashamedly, but instead rode with him to his castle, never to return to her cruel home. Stepsisters are really pretty. Usually they're portrayed with some blemishes or whatever, or some sort of ugliness, but they're really gorgeous. The girl's sobs quieted when she heard a bird chirping at the window ledge. Why, you look just like a bird whose wing I nursed not long ago, she said with wonder. And before her very eyes, the bird, so small and delicate, turned into a fairy godmother. There's no need to cry, my dear, the woman said gently. Oh, Cinderella gasped, I, I, you wish to go to the ball to see the prince, isn't it so? Cinderella nodded with astonishment, still unable to speak. Well, since you did a great kindness for me, now I shall do a kindness for you. First run into the garden and fetch me the largest pumpkin you can find. Cinderella did not understand how a pumpkin could help her, but neither did she understand how a bird could become a fairy godmother, so without question she obeyed. Seems legit. The fairy drew out her magic wand and struck the pumpkin lightly. It blossomed into a splendid gilt coach lined with rose pink satin. Cinderella's eyes sparkled with awe. Now fetch me the mouse trap out of the pantry, my dear. Sorry. Ever more excited, Cinderella rushed to bring it to her. The fairy lifted up the wire door, and as each mouse ran out, she struck it, and it changed into a beautiful horse. This is one of my favorite pictures. The fairy godmother is gorgeous. How oh, pretty. Here's a lovely full page of turning them into horses and the carriage and all kinds of cool stuff. The fairy turned to her astonished godchild. But what shall I do for your coachman, Cinderella? I saw two rats in the rat trap, she suggested, and they might welcome a more pleasant fate. You are right. Go and look for them. When they were found, the fairy made them into most respectable coachmen with the finest whiskers imaginable. Hmm. Afterward, she took six lizards from behind the well and changed them into six footmen, all in dashing uniforms, who immediately jumped up behind the carriage as if they had become they had been footmen all their days. Well, Cinderella, now you can go to the bowl, announced the fairy. And I shall see the prince, the girl sang, but wilted when she looked down on her ragged frock. Yeah, I've always wondered how they could forget that. Like, that's pretty... whatever. Before Cinderella could say a word, her godmother laughed and then touched her with the wand. Instantly, her threadbare jacket became heavy with gold and jewels, and her coarsely woven petticoat lengthened into a gown of sweeping satin. From underneath peeped out her little feet, covered with silk stockings and the prettiest glass slippers in the world. There's a lot of bows on this dress. I don't necessarily approve, but it's pretty. I'm not a girly girl myself. My dress is actually Converse brand. I didn't know they made clothes, but you know, whatever. Now Cinderella, said the fairy godmother, you may go, but remember if you stay one instant after the last stroke of midnight, your carriage will become a pumpkin, your coachman rats, your horses mice, and your footmen lizards, while you yourself will appear just as humble as you did before. Radiant, Cinderella made her promise and climbed into her grand coach, which dashed, dashed off into the night. At the palace, the prince warmly greeted his guests as they milled about the ballroom. But when Cinderella walked in, he could see no one else. The dazzled crowd stood aside to let her pass, and they whispered to one another, Oh, how beautiful she is. The most fashionable ladies planned to have identical garments made the very next day. Copycats. The prince offered Cinderella his hand and led her out to dance. She moved so gracefully that he admired her ever more. 
He thought her face familiar, but how could such an extraordinary lady exist in the kingdom without his knowledge? When he could stand it no longer, he asked her if they had been introduced before. I'm afraid not, sir, she replied, and, fearing that he might remember the cinder girl in the wood, went off with a deep curtsy to seek out her sisters. She chatted cheerfully with them at supper, and they relished the attention of so magnificent a lady, for they did not recognize her in her finery. That's pretty sneaky. That's awesome. Somehow the carriage is flying. They skip that detail. It's kind of hard to see because everything is yellow, but whatever. Oh, and here's a grand picture of the ball. So much detail and so much yellow. I'm not a fan of yellow, but you know, that's eh, gold. We can say it's gold. Soon, Cinderella heard the clock strike a quarter to twelve, and after a gracious goodbye, she was escorted gallantly by the prince to her carriage. In no time, she arrived at her own door, where her fairy godmother awaited her. Cinderella begged her permission to go to another ball the following night, and the fairy granted her approval. But when the two sisters were heard at the gate, she vanished, leaving Cinderella alone in the chimney corner. It was the most wonderful ball, cried the elder sister, and there was the most beautiful princess I ever saw who was lovely to us both. Was she, said Cinderella, and who might she be? Nobody knew, though everybody is puzzling about it, especially the prince. Indeed, replied Cinderella, a little more interested. I should like to see her. Then she turned to the elder sister and said, Madame, will you not let me go tomorrow and lend me your yellow gown? What? I am not completely mad, the sister replied. A cinder girl cannot attend such an affair, no matter what her attire. What I love about this picture is that you can still kind of see her fancy gown, but it's kind of transparent. It's just kind of trailing behind. Here's a big old pumpkin. The next night came and the two young ladies departed for the ball. Cinderella, more lavishly outfitted than ever, followed them shortly after. Now remember, 12 o'clock were her grandmother's parting words. The prince's attention to her was even greater than on the first evening, and in her delight time slipped by quickly. They were talking together near a lovely pool when he said, Truly, my lady, I am sure we have known each other. But perhaps it is just that your face reminds me of the gentle sun and your voice reminds me of the sweet blue, blue bird that sings at my window. Jeez. At that moment, Cinderella heard a clock strike the first stroke of twelve. Without so much as a goodbye, she leapt up with fright and fled as lightly as a deer. The prince followed but could not catch up to the nimble maiden. How? She's wearing like... That's gotta be like 50 pounds of jewels and stuff. It's like a suit of armor. That's not light. Whatever, it's a story. Just suspend disbelief. Cinderella arrived at home breathless and weary, ragged and cold, without carriage or footman or coachman. The only remnant of her magnificence was one of her little glass slippers. The other she had dropped on the palace stairs as she ran away. Again, she would have been tripping all over the place. I don't understand how... Stop it, Lucy. Stop it. <clears throat> Here's a lovely muted illustration of the escape. Where's your slipper? Oh, there it is. Super tiny. It's just kind of shiny. She's wearing pink! I also love pink. When the two sisters returned, they chattered endlessly of the enchanting princess who had suddenly fled through the ballroom and disappeared as the clock struck twelve. But when the prince had found one of her little glass slippers, which he carried in his pocket and took out continually so that he might gaze at it affectionately. All the court and the royal family could see that he was desperately in love with the lady who had worn it. As Cinderella listened in silence, her face turned rosy, but no one thought it was anything but a glow from the warmth of the kitchen fire. The next morning, Cinderella went to her weary work again, just as before. Meanwhile, the rest of the city was stunned by the sight of the prince and his page riding around town with a little glass slipper in hand. With a flourish of trumpets, a herald announced that the shoe was to be tried on the foot of every lady in the kingdom, and the prince wished to marry the lady to whom it belonged. Princesses, duchesses, countesses, and simple gentlewomen all tried it on, but it would fit absolutely no one. There's a little 
little shoe. It's right there. It's sparkling. Magically changes sizes constantly. That's the only way this could work. At last, the prince and his assistants came to Cinderella's house. The eager stepsisters each tried to force their clumsy foot into the glass slipper, but their attempts were in vain. May I try it on? asked Cinderella, who had been sitting unnoticed in the chimney corner. What, you? cried the others, bursting into shouts of laughter. But Cinderella only smiled, and her sisters could not prevent her from trying on the shoe, for as she stood up, the prince recognized the girl from their chance encounter in the woods. Yes, perhaps the gentle lady can help me, the prince encouraged. For my heart aches like the lame wing of the songbird she once rescued. This guy's smooth. Cinderella's sisters looked on, horrified, as the prince himself kne kne knelt to try the slipper on her pretty little foot. It was a perfect fit. Then Cinderella drew from her pocket the matching slipper, which she also put on, and stood up. Suddenly before them was the ravishing lady with whom the king's son had fallen in love. I just want to point out, it says that the stepsisters have clumsy feet, but I just want to point out, look at that point. Look at it. It's perfect. Like, that's some on-point ballet-ish right there. Like, that's, that's seriously impressive. That doesn't count as clumsy. <clears throat> Moving on. Her sisters recognized her at once. With astonishment and shame, they threw themselves at her feet, begging her pardon for all their unkindness. Cinderella embraced them, telling them she forgave them with all her heart, and only hoped they would love her always and treat others with more compassion. As for the young prince, he embraced his lost love and said, How I knew that one day in the that day in the woods that you were indeed special, but I should have fully recognized that heart with a cloak in rags or regalia. Now that he saw her soul was humble and full of goodness, he found her more lovely than ever, and he insisted upon marrying her immediately. The wedding was a grand celebration, for all in the land were invited, whether rich or poor, beggarman or cinder girl. Lost? She... She ran from him like the night before. Here's the bride and groom, and they got a dog! That's a, that's a beautiful German Shepherd mix pup. I do love dogs. The dogs. My dogs are out front right now, or else I would bring them, but whatever. And when they inherited the kingdom, Cinderella and her prince became known far and wide as the fairest and kindest rulers the people had ever known. The end. I just, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and today's dragon uh, that has been uh, reading and listening to the story with us is Ireland. I just wanted to introduce him. Uh, he is kind of the dumbest of all of the family. I'm sorry, Shh, cover your ears. Um, but he's, he's very strong and you're very wise. It's true. All right, you want to say hi? I gotta go to work. Mm. Okay, bye.